Hello, so thank you for coming to listen to our talk on how to extend risk five to accelerate AI and machine learning. So I'm here today presenting with my colleague Ronia and I'm really here to just give a little bit of an introduction and some background to what she's going to be talking about, which is the interesting stuff she's been doing over the last few months. So this project came out of a collaboration between MB Crossan and the University of Southampton. For the last few years, we've been acting as an industrial partner to their master's students in the end of year project. And this particular piece of work that we're, we're discussing today came out of those collaborations. We took six of their extremely bright master students and we asked them to go away and build an accelerator on a risk-five core for the purpose of uh, improving the performance of neural network events. And as we only will discuss later, the students did a spectacular job on this. Um, and in fact, the job they did was so spectacular, we decided to continue the project in the Google Summer of Code this year, which is where Veronia has come in. Um, so I think it's at this point I should really hand over to Veronia and let her talk about the work she's done and let her talk about how you got involved with it as well. Thank you, William. I will now give an overview of the design process of the accelerator, why some important design decisions were made, and a demo of how to, it is done and how to use it. The AI accelerator design started with choosing an instruction set extension to implement. There were two options. The first is to start from scratch with new instructions, and the other is to choose the necessary instructions from existing extensions. The first option is best if we want to design instructions tailored to a specific application. However, it takes a lot of design effort to come up with an instruction set from scratch. It also requires further work to integrate these instructions into the assembler. The second option is more suitable for our project. The vector extension already exists and has been through multiple iterations. Machine learning is known to be an application that can be optimized using the vector extensions, so there is little to be gained by starting from scratch. By picking only the necessary instructions from the vector extension, the complexity of the accelerator can be reduced and we can also have performance improvements. This is the approach taken in this project. We will now give a demo of how the design process has been developed for the software, benchmarking, accelerator design, and FPGA bring up stages. We will also discuss the main steps required for designing a RISC-V vector extension-based accelerator. First, we discuss the software. The software is designed to allow neural network models to run on the vector extension hardware. At the top level, the software interfaces with TensorFlow Lite, which allows the machine learning benchmark Tiny ML Perf to be run. At the lowest level, the software runs the most commonly used neural network operations on the accelerator through RISC-V assembly instructions. In the next slide, we show the frequency of occurrence of operations in the neural network software. Some of the neural network operations are complicated, such as convolutions, and to simplify the software design process, these were split down into simpler functions. These simpler functions are then implemented in vector assembly, allowing the more complex parts of the operation to be designed in C. To test the optimizations we have implemented in the C and in the vector assembly, we bring up a test environment of the CV32E40P. We include the RISC-V GNU toolchain, the Spike, ISA simulator, and a very later model for the CV32E40P. Using this environment, we measure the performance change of tiny ML perf when using the optimized port of CFL Micro. As shown in the figure, the performance of the optimized version of tiny ML perf has a speed up of roughly 7.3 on Spike and 5.4 on the very later model. We now discuss how the CV32E40P can be extended with the vector accelerator. The CV32E40P processor core is verified and is known to be reliable. Therefore, to avoid introducing more bugs, this design avoids modification to the CPU core wherever this is possible. The added vector instructions are executed on a dedicated accelerator, which is designed to be as independent from the CPU as possible. Instructions are dispatched between the CPU and the accelerator through a dedicated interface, and the accelerator contains its own decode logic, registers, arithmetic logic, and memory access logic. This project uses the RISC-V vector extension as a basis for its custom instructions, but as mentioned before, not every instruction is implemented. Fewer instructions means simpler logic, leading to less silicon area and also lower power consumption. <laughs> 
In some cases, this also has performance because it may shorten the critical path for the instructions that have been actually implemented. The CV32E40P features an auxiliary processing unit interface, and this interface follows a subset of the OBI interface used to communicate with the system memory. This interface is used by the optional floating point unit, and since this unit is not used in this design, the interface is used by our accelerator instead. Several minor modifications were also required for the core RTL in order to support the architecture of the accelerator, especially with regards to multi-cycle instructions. Operations on the vector elements are carried out in the arithmetic execution logic of the accelerator, and its design uses a SIMD architecture where the same operation is applied simultaneously to multiple data elements using four separate processing elements. The next step in the project was to bring up the CV32E40P core and the accelerator on an FPGA. We first started with bringing up the core without the integration of the accelerator. For that, we used the Open Hardware Group Core 5 MCU project, and we built the bitstream for the Nexus A7 board. This is how a Nexus A7 board looks like. We will now present in more detail how it has been used in our project and provide a demo for it. The screenshot from the Ubuntu terminal shows the command make Nexus email, which is used to build the Core 5 MCU B stream for the Nexus A7. The built instructions are provided in the Core 5 MCU GitHub repo, and this is how the output should look like when the build process has started successfully. One important tool to have is Xilinx Vivado, which is used for census implementation and bit stream generation. After the base stream is running on the FPGA, we started working on running ELF files on the RISC-V cores. OpenOCD and GDB are used for connection to the Gigilant HS2 debugger on the board and hence debugging the ELF binaries. Since we are compiling bare metal code, this stage also involved getting a linker script to assign the program sections to the correct addresses of the Core 5 MCU RAM. The command shown here is used for downloading the bitstream on the FPGA. And this is the output you should see after the download process starts. We now show how to connect the board for debugging. And the most important connection is the HS2 debugger, which is connected to PMOD at the lower pins of JB on the board. After the connections are plugged in, we run OpenOCD. The configuration file, as well as all steps and instructions, are detailed in our GitHub repo. When OpenOCD is running and waiting for a connection, we start GDB in another terminal. The figure shows a sample Hello World program being debugged by GDB on top of our design. After completing the previous steps successfully, the accelerator code was integrated into the project. The same cycle of senses, implementation, and bitstream generation, and then debugging followed. At this stage, we are implemented, implementing more test benches to debug our design. With this, we come to the end of our demo. Thank you for your attention, and we welcome your questions and feedback. Hello, so thank you. There we go. It's been suggested we elaborate a bit more, Verena. Do you want to talk about a little bit more about the verification of the project? I think that was, uh, yeah. Yeah. So in the earlier stages of the project, the verification was done by expanding the self-checking tests in the core verilator test bench 
to verify the new instructions that have been implemented. And then later we developed more test cases with randomized inputs to increase the coverage. And at the current stage, we are still working on the RTL verification to make sure that the design is error-free. Second one is what is the interface between the 40p and the accelerator? That's another good one for you, Vernia. So the interface is the OBI interface, which is already implemented in the CV32 E40P. And this um, this is in the interface to, to the memory. And the, the interface was basically um, used by the FPU, but since this is not included in the current project, so this is used by the accelerator instead. So. Perhaps I'll take to you what kind of applications are targeted and just very quickly, because I know we're short on time. Um, so we were targeting neural network inference with this accelerator uh, and we benchmarked it using the tiny MLPerf um, neural network, uh, visual wake word benchmark. Do you want to talk about the dedicated interface? Uh, last question then. <laughs> Okay, so the, the dedicated interface is basically, as I mentioned before, the OBI interface, which is in, an interface to the, the data memory of the processor used by the processor. And I would suggest if someone needs more details to check the, the open source project, it's available on GitHub of the AI accelerator, and this is where this has been implemented. Thank you very much for watching our talk. Um, please look at our GitLab Hub page and look forward to speaking on this again. Thank you.